Welcome to On tonight's Clubhouse Live, Josh Jones welcomes Packers offensive lineman Justin McRae. The Packers had a tough one in the Motor City yesterday. We'll talk about that and more with the guys. Plus, tonight's Clubhouse Live challenge, it has a Halloween twist. And we're giving away another set of tickets to the Gridiron Glory Exhibit at the History Museum at the Castle. It's time to get started. Let's open the doors. All right, all right, all right. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to the Clubhouse Sports Pub and Grill here inside the Paper Valley Hotel in downtown Appleton, Wisconsin. I am Brett Christofferson with USA Today Network Wisconsin. How's everybody doing tonight? Good. Great energy. Love the energy. Uh, we've got a fun show in store. We've got a great guest, so let's get to it. But first things first, I've got to mention our, well, they weren't door openers tonight. They were manning the door, but give it up. For members of the Appleton Pop Warner J E T S Jets Jets Jets, <laughs> all right, all right, that's enough, that's enough. Quiet, we're doing a show. Now go sit down. Hey, uh, perfect segue into this next uh, little segment. It's when I have to introduce. Uh, a guy that we all can't stand is Chicago Bears fan Ricardo Arguello, yes, everybody. And, and, and I... Let him have it. I, I, I believe you're supposed to refer to the Bears as NFC North leading no, it, Chicago Bears, my friend. That has been the case last week, next couple weeks, and throughout the season. Let me wow, just say that. I don't... Ricardo, it's five games into the season. There's 11 games to play. I mean, what can I say? I'm maybe overreacting. A little premature, right? Uh, but I, I can understand since you live in 1985 I how do. badly you want a. That's uh, right. Great year. Uh, an NFC North champion. But I, I think uh, the Bears will fizzle out. That's enough about your Bears minute. We've got some other things to talk about. And uh, how about Detroit Lions 31, Green Bay Packers 23? It was a tough day, wasn't it? Yeah. Ugly start equaled an ugly outcome for the green and gold as they dropped a 2-2-1 two, two and one on the young season. Remember that. It's a young season. A long way to go. Despite rolling up 521 offensive yards, possessing the ball nearly seven minutes longer than the Lions. Uh, green Bay trailed 24 zip at the break and saw the Lions score 17 points off of three turnovers. Meanwhile, special teams struggled uh, with the usually reliable Mason Crosby missing uh, four field goal attempts and one extra point try. Twelve penalties for the Packers for 112 yards. Detroit, guys, has beaten Green Bay in three straight matchups for the first time since the 1990 and 91 seasons. That's not good. And you know who doesn't like it? It's Mad Vince. He doesn't like losing to anybody. Look at him. Look at you, Ricardo. He's really mad at you right now. You're ticking off <laughs> I'm a little the great, worried, fabled Vince Lombardi. So I'm a little scared. I tell you what, we'll get uh, Vince's spirits a little bit happier when we uh, say that our co-host is back. He's sitting right over there. It's Green Bay Packers safety. Josh Jones, he's right there. Still need a nickname. We still need a nickname for uh, Josh. We'll figure it out. And look who's hanging out with Josh tonight. It's offensive line night here on Clubhouse Live. You never know how that's going to go. It's right guard, offensive lineman extraordinaire, Justin McRae. He's right there. All around lineman. First things first, I want to say a, uh, a big thank you to our sponsor, Shopco, the official hometown store of the Green Bay Packers. ShopCo is celebrating kids who are making a positive impact in their communities and beyond through its Kids Making a Difference program in which 10 kids this season, young leaders between the ages of 6 and 12, will serve as ShopCo's kickoff kid at Lambeau Field. For more information about Kids Making a Difference or to sign up to be a 2019 ShopCo kickoff kid, go to shopco.com slash kickoff kid. That's a great program, Ricardo. We've loved profiling the ShopCo kickoff kids. We'll do it again in two weeks uh, when we're back at it. All right, uh, make yourself busy and tell everybody how the show works, would you please? Well, this is an interactive show, so we invite your comments and questions to our live chat. That can be found online next to our video viewer, Margaret Notchik over here. She's monitoring the chat. She'll relay those comments and questions right over to you, Brett. I think Margaret deserves a round of applause, right? Yes. She's, she's the rookie on the team. Doing a fine job. Doing a fine job. Uh, Clubhouse is the hashtag, so use it and give us a follow. I'm at PC Brett C. She's at Margaret Notchik. Josh I'm is at, at Josh Jones 11 underscore, and Justin's at 
64 JDM. Um, blah, 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 blah. Doesn't matter. And uh, give us a like at uh, Facebook.com slash Clubhouse Live. All right. We've got the Bears welcome ad in place just for Why? you, Ricardo. Because NFC North leading Bears. I keep yeah. telling you that. So the guys can stomp their feet all over that ugly logo, kind of clean off their feet a little bit, a little dirty outside after the rain. Hey, Let's Brett, you know what? The, the kids over there, the Jets, they love the Bears over there, don't you? Yeah. Oh, oh. Those, those kids why, ain't right. Why are those you kids trying, ain't right. Why are you trying to incite a riot tonight, I don't know. huh? We just got them quiet. Just leave them alone now for a while, would you? Until that sugar kicks in. All right, our co-host, let's get him onto the stage, right? He's in his second NFL season, both with the Packers. He's in his first season as our beloved co-host. He plays defense, special teams. He does whatever is asked of him. And we found out last week, everybody, he loves Wisconsin cheese curds, doesn't he? He loves them. Give it up for Green Bay Packers safety, number 27, Josh Jones. See that little handshake we just did? Yeah. I, I'm, not cool enough, I'm not cool enough to do stuff like that. <laughs> That's what my wife tells me anyway. Let's What's do that again. On, Let me have, what, what was I doing wrong? We go like this? Wait, no, we go like this? And then yeah. like this? Yeah, look me in my eye, though. Okay. Huh? You always look a man in his eye when you shake his hand. Well, I got to see what I'm doing first. <laughs> okay? And I got to concentrate. Then we go like this? Like this? All right. And then like that. And then... And what are you looking at? Pistol. Like, okay. That's too much. Touch. <laughs> That's way too much touching for me. <laughs> you know, getting all sweaty. Hey. Yeah. Programming note, Josh Jones and everybody out there. Programming note: No show next week. No show next week Monday because these guys are they're, playing Monday Night Football. They're, they're a little playing. busy. So that's going to be our Clubhouse Live bye week, Ricardo. You can uh, hang out and do whatever it is you do on your free time. Not that anybody out? cares. We can, we can watch the game together. The, well, yeah, or maybe the Brewers, too. The Brewers oh, might yeah. be playing. How there about the Brew Crew, everybody? Yes. One step away from the World Series, Josh Jones. For real? They're in the National League Champ. You don't really? even know about the Brewers? Uh, I just don't pay attention. I'm, I'm, I really apologize, you know. Come on now, Josh. we got to get you more sconied up here. But uh, we will be back in two weeks. So that's October 22nd, two weeks. That's coming off their bye week. So yep. we will have a show. Josh will be here. So mark it on your calendars. No show next week. We'll be back in two weeks. I don't know how much more I can spell that out for you. You got it? Everybody got it? Yeah. All right. Oh, now we can get started. I say we got to scan you up. What else, what else can we do to make you a true Wisconsinite, Josh Jones? How about, have you ever had a brat? I mean, I don't eat pork, so oh. uh, nah. Get him yeah. a brat. Fire nah, up a brat. I can't. Actually, they, go, they go against what I, you know, what I stand for. So I can't, I can't eat, I don't, I don't eat pork. You know, uh, how about it's a not, it's not, it's not nothing that I stopped eating pork like four years ago. So I just did a lot of like research about it, and you know, I may, I may go vegan after the season. So oh, what's the matter with you, huh? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm gonna start it out. You what's know? the matter with you? Cut meat, just period. You know, not just pork. Oh. Just hey, Brett, period, he said know. meat, not cheese. So you're all right, man. Yeah, hey, man. he was he was asking for some he cheese curds. Asking. I think he I, wants I, more I, cheese I can't, curds. Vegan, no cheese. I can't do. I probably can't do cheese. Oh, what? No, I don't know. I, well, I don't you better know. eat those cheese curds fast then before you turn <laughs> uh, turn vegan. Have yeah. you ever visited a cottage in the north woods of Wisconsin? Have I have not. I oh, have not. anybody got a cottage out there that they like to invite Josh? Look at all the yeah. hands. Oh, you got Dale right there, Jamie Wilson Harvey. <laughs> they all want you to come visit their Northwoods cottage. It's <laughs> deep, deep, deep in the woods. Yeah. How would you like that? I love it, man. I always wanted to go to. Um, I know a. Uh, is a cottage in the cabin like the same thing? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I always wanted to go in the cabin, all in the back in the woods, just chill out. You know what I'm saying? Nobody to bother you. Of course, I've seen some cabins or cottages, Ricardo, that they call cottages, but they're right. like mansions on a they're, lake. They're Hiltons. They're like nine bedrooms, yeah. eight bathrooms, but they call it a little cottage. Yeah. How about have you ever been to Wisconsin Dells? Uh, what's that? What? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> help, help me out. What's it's, that? It's the water park capital of the world. Nah, see, the only the only water park I ever been to was um, I think when I was younger I was at, I went to Six Flags and Cedar Point. I thought you may say Great America down by uh, Chicago. Great America, yeah, I, I, w I went there when I was like five or six. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that doesn't count because that's in Illinois and we don't care about Illinois. Yeah, we do. We're talking about Wisconsin Dells. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? We got to take them out, Ricardo. You, me, and Josh yeah. just hang out on a Tuesday during their day off. Maybe your bye week. We could all hang out. Nah, see, I got business to take care of. My body, you know, so. We could go up. I got, a, I, got a, I got a baby shower for my daughter. You know what I'm saying? My daughter will be here in January, so Ooh. I got to 
Welcome her into the world. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? that's good. <laughs> yeah. When are we gonna see your uh, son? When are you gonna bring him on? When when he gets his act together, you know. He's, <laughs> oh yeah. He's at this stage, you know. He's ten months old. Um, he gets into everything. He's a mama's boy. He's a, such a mama's boy. Yeah. yeah. So, always wants to be under his mom. Um, yeah. So. Just Brett, bring Brett, Brett wants to Brett wants to change the diaper. He no, likes no, doing that. No, I, I want you to babysit so you don't <laughs> no, have to be no, in the show. I'm right? going with this. Josh can give you his son, and you can get out of here. I promise you, like babysitting my son is like having twins. Oh boy. Yes. <laughs> I th I, it may be that hard, you know. I, I've never had twins, but I, I feel like it's probably that hard. Um, no, I don't. But know. I, I I do enjoy it though. But maybe I don't get as 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 much of it as his mom gets because I'm not as home as much. But uh, yeah, she she gets a lot of it. You know what's gonna happen to your son? They're gonna turn out to be like those guys oh, over those there, kids. just crazy, yeah. crazy guys. Yeah. Look at that. I remember those days, man. Enjoy. Yeah. Please listen to this guy. He's like 24 years yeah, old. Know, right? No, I'm <laughs> saying like <laughs> kidding me, man. You grow up so fast. Like I remember. It, I, I promise you, I can probably. I remember vividly when I was 10, 11 years old. Like honestly, I can remember, and it went by so fast. You know what happened when I was 10 years old? That's when the Brewers were last in the World Series. That's dating myself. <laughs> I was 10 years old when the Brew Crew was in the World Series. I was gonna say the car was invented, but all right. Yeah, good one. That. Yeah. Good one. You got something to do, Ricardo, because it ain't in here, right? Get out of here. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, you finally you got on the field, defensive man, side. Man, you're getting some defensive I got snaps, snaps, Josh man. Jones, you, right? You, you count that getting on the field, man? Because I don't. Okay. <laughs> okay. Come on, so, well, man. Go ahead. Yeah. Nah, what, what are you thinking? Nah, I'm just. What are you telling Mike me, McCarthy? That was a bogus penalty, man. I, I, yeah, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? Well, I, I well, try to do no, something, man. Sorry, spring, I, I'm sorry, spring, Brett. bam, bam. I, I, you know what I'm saying? We'll try to get bam, bam. His. We'll talk you know. about it. Sorry, we'll talk. It's, 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 it's on it's the tough, script. Man. It's on the script. Let's follow the script, everybody. <laughs> Let's follow the script. But I thought you, I mean, you, you got on the field a little bit. You're finally uh, easing into it. Uh, I guess yeah, assess. Yeah, yeah. You want more, don't you? Just tell, on, tell the world you want more. I mean, that's, 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 why, that's what I'm here for. I mean, you ain't going to take a player in the second round for, to, to, not do, to not contribute to the team. I mean, am I right or am I wrong? You know, so. I mean, if that's the case, you know what I'm saying? You just. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 don't, I don't like, you know what I'm saying? Some guys, some guys play this, everybody play this game for different reasons. You know, some guys play this game because what comes with it, what they can get out of it. Some guys just, they enjoy just getting a check every two weeks. You know what I'm saying? They're okay with just being mediocre and not improving and just being one of the guys on the team. And you know, me, I'm the, I, I wanna work for what I, what I get, you know what I'm saying? I don't wanna just get a check and feel like I didn't do nothing for it. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you know that you can be out there. You know what I'm saying? You know you can contribute to the team. You know, that, that, that's what hurts the most. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's, it's tough, man. Trust Bent, me. It's, it's real to your tough. family. We're your family, Josh Jones. <laughs> Just let it out. Yeah. So, what, so can you... Can you go to the coaching staff? Can you say, hey, come on? Man, it's, it's, it's not my call, man. I, I, just, I just do what I'm told, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's nothing against them or whoever makes the calls. It's nothing against them. Man, I, I love being here. Like, like y'all... From day one, when I when I first got that call, I remember vividly when I got the 920 area code on my on my number because I was stressing out on on draft night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then when I when I when I got this call, like I, I tweeted, Green Bay, let's go. You know what I'm saying? I was I was just so excited. Uh, He's so, ready to go. Yeah, I mean, come on, now. this is is no other. It's not a, another not a better place to be. You know what I'm saying? I, I ask guys around the league, you know, how is it being, you know, on this team and. What they explain is not what we go through. So, man, we, I, I got it pretty good here, man. But I just want to be out there more. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's just my. You can't fault but, that, right? He's, he's uh, but I mean, you just got to keep working, man. And obviously, it's, there's, there's things that I have to do better. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, like? Like, you, I just, I just got to improve. Improve on last year. You know what I'm saying? Just keep improving every day. Um, doing what I got to do. You know what I'm saying? Just to, just to get on the field. You know what I'm saying? Just, just be a good teammate. Um, do all those little things. You know that matter, and um, you know it'll, it'll happen eventually. Yes, there you go. That's that's a good attitude. Keep the faith. I I, I like your enthusiasm, <laughs> and you know Mike Pettin's watching the show right now. He is he's a watching. big fan yeah. of Clubhouse Live <laughs> as he's breaking down film on the, on the 49ers at the same time. But I yeah. guess how, how now? I mean, there's an adjustment period. Having right. a new coordinator, how do you feel? You're fitting into the scheme, and, and uh, how comfortable are you within um, it now? Are you you feel you know like what, you got man? it pretty much? I mean, I do, but you, you know what? You, you, you can't do too much. You can't do too much learning. You can't stop learning. You know what I'm saying? Every day I'm learning something, you know, different. You know what I'm saying? I'm just continue to, you know, to to, to grasp everything. And everybody's on. Everybody on the defense is learning. You know what I'm saying? This is 
this is a new defense. Um, you know, we do a lot of things. You know, we have a lot of packages and, 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 and such. So, um, I mean, every day is a, is, a, is, a, is a chance to get better. Well, you look at uh, what you guys did against the Lions, 264 yards is all you allowed. They right. were 5 of 13 on third downs. You were dealt with some short fields, obviously, right. uh, with, with some tough circumstances on the other side of the ball. But I guess, how, how, do, you guys, how do you think the, the defense played against Detroit? Division game in a dome, um, a tough environment? I felt like we played well. Um, obviously, we could have played better. Obviously, we didn't get the, get the win. No matter how, the, the way you look at it on defense, no matter what the offense does, no matter what special teams does, we have to be able to control the game. You know what I'm saying? If a game is 3-0 and that, that team doesn't score any points, then that's how it, it, it some, sometimes it, it may be like that. You know what I'm saying? And, and we have to be able to score points, get takeaways, and, and, and be able to change the game on defense. And uh, that's one of the things we didn't do. You know what I'm saying? They, obviously, Detroit, they took the ball away, you know, uh, multiple times. And uh, we didn't take the ball away any. So uh, that's, one of the, that's one of the things that, that you look at after the game and say, oh, uh, if we would have took the ball away multiple times, then maybe we would have won a game. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the, the defense continues to gel moving forward. There's definitely some good yeah. things. Some injuries in the back end right, right now are kind of plaguing you guys a little bit. But I think yeah. it doesn't look like they're anything too serious. And that nah. uh, I would think by after right. the bye, uh, it should be pretty, pretty healthy. Special teams, Ricardo kind of mentioned a rough day for, for the special teams unit last week. You said that's a big yeah. part of it. It's a third man, uh, of, huge, of, of, the, uh, of the game, right? So it's offense, huge, defense, special teams. It's, it's yeah. a, a very important piece. But Mason Crosby had issues and key penalties. Uh, plagued you guys. So what corrections did you see as re you reviewed that part of the film today? But what are some of the um, corrections that maybe Ron Zook brought up that uh, is it more mental <coughs> than physical? At, I mean, at this obviously point? it's more mental than anything. Um, I mean, um, as far as like what happened on, I know Ty's long yeah. return. Uh, I mean, it was just a bad call. You know what? I, what I could have did better by getting my head across, maybe they wouldn't have called it. Um, Maybe I could have just laid on the guy, man. They wouldn't have caught it, you know what I'm saying? But he, he sold it, you know, pretty good, man. And just anytime, anytime a guy falls behind a returner on any type of return team, they're, they're going to call that, that penalty nine times out of ten. It's just, it's just the nature of the game and how, how they look at it, you know what I'm saying? Um, they, th they thought a guy got blocked in the back, um, you know, it's 50-50. It's a toss-up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 65-yard return from Bam Bam nullified. And I, I don't know about you guys, uh, but I thought it was kind of a ticky-tack call. It was a call. bad call. I, I thought when they showed bad it on call. replay, I'm like, yeah. really? What? And yeah. I'm sure uh, you, when you saw that flag, I think you, we see you jumping around in the background. Yeah, no, I'm, like, I, I was on. just like, you know, but, but, but again, man, you, you can control what you – you got to control what you can control, man. Um, that's what I, I – I don't – I don't like to be able to put, you know, the decision in the ref's hands. So don't even – I shouldn't even have put myself in that situation. You know what I'm saying? So – that's what I think. Accountability, right? Taking, uh, taking accountability for what happened, even though that the, uh, the, the officials... <laughs> Ricardo, I think you'll agree. Why does it seem like whatever game we watch, <laughs> when there's a big play, all of a sudden you see the yellow thing on the bottom by well, the score, flag, Any, any flag. big play, even the players are looking to see if there's a flag, because it always know. seems to be something really? like that happening, right? There, there has to be a record really? number of flags being thrown right now in the NFL this season, because yeah. it always seems like when there's a big play... It's coming back, and it's yeah. getting really tough to watch. And I know you're a big football fan, Ricardo. You think the same thing. No, I, I definitely, when I saw the play, because I was watching their friend's house, definitely thought that was a bad call. And I could yeah. tell on your face, too, because they put a shot on you, too. You yeah, were not happy. No. You were not happy, Josh. <laughs> By the way, if you ever get a chance to be interviewed on national TV or if you do the uh, Sunday night game and, and right. you say, hey, Josh Jones, NC State, make sure you say Clubhouse Live, too. Yeah. Clubhouse Live. Clubhouse Live. Clubhouse Live, Mondays at 6.30, ClubhouseLive.com, yeah. and Clubhouse Live, no Facebook.com slash Clubhouse Live. Can I you get that, that all in for us, please? That's a little bit much to say, but I just mean, do it. I, I'll, I'll say the Clubhouse Live part. Just do it. <laughs> and just say you hate Ricardo, too, as part of that. That's too much. That's too much. A yeah. couple more things before we go to our social media question of the night. But uh, speaking of penalties, now Josh Jackson blocking the back call, too, which I thought was a, a bogus call, yeah. too. How are you coached to avoid these guys when, they're, when you're getting ready to block and all of a sudden <laughs> you they're know, turning their body? And then you're, you're in no man's land at that point. You know what, point. man? Um, combat penalties like that, you know, when you're in a, the, the field of, like, just combating, you're going against a guy one-on-one, -on -one, it's like you can't get really mad at those penalties like that. You know, foolish penalties, like, you know, I remember last week I jumped off sides, you know, and, but it was, they, they, they didn't accept it, you know what I'm saying? It's just little, little penalties like that, you know what I'm saying, are the, the mental pen penalties. You know, you can get mad at those because it's just about focus. But, you know, penalties that's, like, for holding, you're trying to, you know, strain, block a guy, keep blocking a guy so we can score a touchdown. Then again, it's like, you know what I'm saying, it's, like I said, 50-50, you know what I'm saying? 
depending on how it was, you can get mad at it. But I mean, Josh was just, you know, trying to trying to block, man, and trying to make something happen. You know, trying to we needed a spark. So, I mean, penalties like that, you you can't really get mad at. I just think it's almost impossible, Ricardo, when the guy's turning as you're right there blocking all of a sudden. Oh no, nope, we can't do yeah. it. You're, you're blocking the back now. It's another. But I mean, then again, it's like, like you know, I, I know Zook preaches. You know, if you if you if you can't, if he's not looking at you, you don't know, don't block him. If you can't see his face, don't block him. There you go. You know. Simple enough. Oh. If you can't see him, don't block him and disengage. Last tip thing. for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, old number him. 79 if you there. See He's his a guard. Back, don't block him. <laughs> Justin McRae is going to like number 79 there. He plays guard for the Jets. Or yeah. she, I'm sorry. She, she plays. I'm sorry. My, my bad. But uh, last thing Aaron Rodgers, he has used R E L A X, right? Relax. And run the table. Ty Montgomery, when he was here, was it last year or was it two years ago? And everything was going a little haywire. He Chill. said, Chill. Chill. But he said it really long Chill. with his deep voice. Chill. Chill. So now you see the, the Packer fans, they're breathing into their bags, yeah. right? <laughs> they're hyperventilating. It's five games into the season. The world's coming to an end. There's a rift between the head coach <laughs> and the quarterback. Who knows? I mean, this nah, is happening, that is happening. That. Nah, what I do you wouldn't. tell the fans? There's still 11 games to play. I mean, I, I say chill, too. Just, you know what I'm saying? Just keep the faith, man. Stay faithful. I know it's hard. I know. Trust me. I know. It's hard. It's hard. You know, you, we, see, we see you got teams in our, in our conference, like the Rams, doing well, 5-0. and 0, You know what I'm saying? Things like that. And it's hard. And you look at it, you say, we got the best quarterback in the world. Why can't we be like that? You know what I'm saying? I, I, trust me. I know it's hard. Get it. I was a fan at one point before I started playing professionally. I understand. I, I, I get it. Um, but I will say, this is a long season. Um, this this league it, it changes weekly, so you never know what what, what can happen. Um, so, for all you diehard Packer fans, you know, um, we'll we'll get together. I mean, it, it'll it, it just takes time. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. A baby a baby don't come out the womb starting to you know. Easy talk. now, Josh. <laughs> walk, you know Easy. What I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, it the things, things take time, up. you know what I'm saying? So. Take, just let's change the subject here. Let's change the <laughs> yeah, subject yeah. here. No, nah, but but no, nah, seriously though. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's, it's steps. It's it's a, it's a process. You know what I'm saying? And he's right. It's a week to week league. We talk Keep about. Keep the look, I mean, look at the Vikings going yeah. to Philadelphia and winning that game. Who would have thought that? I, I mean, mean it's just weird yeah. stuff continues to happen yeah. every week. Yeah. All right. So let's kick it over to uh, uh, Margaret. She's got tonight's social media question of the night. Yep, and we've got people watching from all over once again. We've got Iowa, Tennessee, New Jersey, California, Oklahoma, Colorado, Nevada, Florida, Alabama, Texas, Minnesota, and of course, Wisconsin. And tonight we also have from Australia. So that's yeah. a little cool. I'm not sure Australia. what time zone they're in. Uh, yeah. But apparently we Is have Is it tomorrow watching. there yet? Can you ask them what it looks like be. tomorrow? I'll, I'll check it. Are we, we okay? I'll Everything check okay? <laughs> But tonight's question is from Jen Ellinger on Facebook, and she wants to know, the camera showed Aaron Rodgers going over to Mason Crosby to show him some support after his fourth missed field goal. What do you do specifically to keep your morale up when small mistakes lead to penalties, lost yards, and missed points? Good question. Keeping morale up when uh, things go uh, bad, how do, you, how do you keep it up? Um, I mean, what I would say is um, every, every player is going to have, have his day in this league. I don't care who you are. Um, I don't care if you're a punter, kicker, left tackle, right tackle, quarterback, fullback, running back. You're going to have a game where it's going to be like, man, I, I didn't, I didn't, I had a horrible day. You know what I'm saying? And we, we have bad days as human beings when we wake up in the morning like, I'm not feeling it. That's just, a, that's just who we are. We're human. We're not, nobody, Mason's not perfect. Mason's is a, is a, a proven veteran plays at a high level, has done it in the past, has been clutch for this team, has won this team some games. You know what I'm saying? So you can't just let one day define what the rest of his career can be or what type of kicker he can be going forward. We know, we, we are, we, you, you've seen what Mason can do. You've seen what he can do. So, you know, you can't just hang your hat on just that game. You know, it, it could be a lot of things that's, that factored into it. But, um, you know, we just got to pick – Pick our guys up, man. Pick pick a pick a guy up. You know, when he, don't don't kick him when he's down. You know what I'm saying? Pick him up. You know what I'm saying? Know that things are, things will get better, um, and just go from there. Just gotta keep on keeping on. I keep think on is what they on, say. Uh, Margaret, what is uh yeah? What does Jen win for having her question asked? 
Yeah, for having your question selected, Jen wins a signed photo of Josh Jones. Each week we'll ask you to submit a question for our upcoming guest that we'll ask live during Monday's show. We'll open it up each week on Facebook.com slash Clubhouse Live. All right, fantastic. And by the way, as you can see, another order of cheese curds has yes. arrived on the <laughs> stage. Josh is already digging in. And uh, let's take a time out, Ricardo, so he can eat a little bit. Uh, let's do tonight's Concrete Cutter Stat Pack. Concrete Cutters Incorporated has been serving our communities for over 38 years. Call them for all your sawing and coring needs. Now, according to ESPN stats and information, uh, the Packers' 24-point halftime deficit against the Lions was the largest of Aaron Rodgers' career. Amazing. It was also the Packers' largest halftime deficit since they trailed the New York Jets 31-0 on their way to a 38-10 loss on December 3, 2006. That's the Brett Favre years. Now, why do I bring this up? Because the Packers followed that up that loss up to the Jets with a 30 to 19 victory over the 49ers, right? Who the Packers play next. So maybe history can repeat itself Monday night. You guys are gonna have a big bounce back win. What do you think, Mean Gene? So keep in mind, history does have a way of repeating itself. Hey, Ricardo, we're doing a trivia again as Josh That's continues true. to dig in here. And we do have some rules, so let's get to them. First off, we'll ask the question. If you think you know the answer, you have to raise your hand. Please don't shout it out. If you're correct, you win what, Brett? Josh, what do they win? Pizza and beer. Yes, pizza and beer. Pizza and beer. That's right. And all you Rugrats right over here. there, it's the real beer. It's not root beer, so you've got to be 21 or older to win. So uh, if you're correct again, you win that. And once you win, you're out for the rest of the show, Brett. And, uh, and, and sorry, live chatters, you got to be here to win. But Margaret Nachek, she's handling that online trivia. All right, contest. I'm asking. You guys are watching. Here we go. Who scored the Packers' first touchdown against the Lions on Sunday? Who scored? You got somebody right at the bar? Yeah. MVS. He gets the bell. Marquez Valdez Scantling. Yes, MVS. But this guy's wearing a Devontae Adams jersey or T-shirt. I'll let you give him the pizza and beer. Give him a round of applause, please. Marquez, Marquez Valdez Scantling, the rookie wide receiver, scored on a three yard pass from Aaron Rodgers in the third quarter, his first career TD reception. Of course, Valdez Scantling was last week's guest. A little clubhouse karma, Josh Jones. Yeah. You're going to see how the clubhouse works. You it, called it. You said he was going to score that I'm touchdown. telling you, good yep. things usually happen to people who are on or part of Clubhouse Live. So, MVS finished with seven catches for 68 yards. All right, you guys ready to get our guest onto the stage? You want to see the big offensive lineman? Hold on, Justin. Here we go. Our guest tonight is in his second NFL season, both with the Packers. He signed with the Packers as a free agent in 2017. He started eight games last season at three different positions. Five at right tackle, two at left guard, and one at right guard. Our guest tonight has uh, three starts so far this season at right guard. He played collegiately at Central Florida, where he earned four letters and started in 32 of the 45 games in which he appeared. Our guest tonight played in the Arena Football League. He is a wrestler... He, is, uh, he has a twin brother. He once worked as a hotel bellman. And this is, this is sacrilegious, everybody. Our guest tonight has been trying to cut back on his dairy intake. He doesn't want to have dairy anymore. <laughs> Give it up for Green Bay Packers offensive lineman and right guard number 64, Justin McCray. So those cheese curds are all yours. They're all yours. So Justin McRae. Oh, the big Wait, offensive ask lineman. Him, is ask here. him if he's had cheese curds. Well, there just a, right. would you quit trying to take over the show? <laughs> this isn't your show. First things first, because this is his show and you are his guest. Josh has always asked the first question of the night. I always wonder, uh, what's it like being a twin? It's cool. Uh, <laughs> now, literally, his brother looks. I know they have identical twins. I understand this. I know when something's identical, it looks exactly like. But his brother, usually you can tell twins apart some, some way. But his brother looks exactly like him. Like, there's no telling them apart, none of that. Yeah, we uh, did all the twin things growing up, switched classes. Uh, ah. my, mo my mom found out in sixth grade and put us all in the same classes, so that stopped then. But, uh, yeah, we look just alike. That's a good question. Actually, I have it on my script. What is the, the, the best trick? The best trick you've played on people as far as being uh, twins. You've got to had you you got to had some some good ones there. I'd probably go with the the, uh, the switching classes, or I could be Jordan right now. So you, you never know. Whoa, <laughs> whoa! That would be a yeah. mean, nasty trick. How can we figure this out? <laughs> no, for real. 
No. Well, now I'm, now I'm freaked out a little bit. <laughs> really? Yeah, I thought Josh was worried. <laughs> Justin's like, I don't want to go on that show, George. Can you do it for me instead, please? Cutting back on your dairy intake. Now, I read an article. I mean, you, you, it's against the law to do this in the state of Wisconsin. You're supposed to eat more dairy, drink whole milk, yogurts, ice cream, cheese. Milkshake. Milkshakes. Anything do, that has dairy in it. I do love milkshakes, too. Uh-huh. But, uh, uh-huh. Well, I saw it, and I know you like ice cream a lot, too. I was reading an article, but you kind of had to make a commitment to uh, kind of alter your, your yeah, I just, uh, diet. Um, I just figured, you know, last year I played, um, I probably played at like the 3.30, in between 3.30, 3.35, and just felt like I didn't need to be that big, uh, and I lost a little bit of weight, and that was one of the things I cut out of my diet uh, to get to it. Anybody, uh, do, hey, do you guys make milkshakes here at the clubhouse? I think this guy needs a milkshake. Don't, don't you think so? No. No, milk. no, no milkshakes. milkshakes. They might have like an ice cream type No drink. ice cream. No ice cream? Well, I'll give you credit. That's a hard thing to do here in the state of Wisconsin. And uh, before we go, I'd have a cheese curd while I ask you your next question. You were, <laughs> you were number 64. So does a certain uh, former right guard, a Packers legend who was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame this season. He's on the, uh, the big mural right there. Jerry Kramer, right? Jerry Kramer, Mean Gene, getting into the Hall of Fame. Have, have you ever had a chance to chat with Jerry, meet Jerry, uh, compare notes with Jerry? Um, I have not yet. But, really? Uh, Definitely looking forward to it in the future. You know, wearing, uh, wearing this number is a big thing here in Green Bay. And, um, you know, I try to get better uh, every day, every week, week in and week out, you know, just so uh, you know, I can pay homage to him. I think, uh, you know, it would be cool, Ricardo, to see some, some power sweeps in the Packers play. But yeah, you and Lane Taylor going? getting out on the run. That could be Bam Bam in the background there, Aaron Rodgers yeah. handing the ball off. Come on, go to Mike McCarthy's office on Wednesday and say, put it in. Uh, maybe next time. No, he's not going <laughs> to listen to you? So what, I'll ask both of you guys this, too, because I haven't asked uh, Josh yet this, but when you look at that mural and you see, like, Vince Lombardi standing in the background, you know that's 13 world right. championships in Green Bay. What does it mean for both of you guys as young players to be part of a franchise that is not only as historic as the Packers, right. but it's celebrating its 100th season, which is amazing? Uh, Josh, you go ahead first, but what does that um, mean to you? To, to be honest, man, like, it, it, they set the standard, you know what I'm saying, for us, you know, so... Being able to go out there and, and, and put on that uniform that so many greats have put on, um, just you know, just playing at Lambeau Field, knowing the history behind it, um, um, just makes it makes guys you know play even harder. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's a, that that we know that every 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 day we come to work that it's a standard set. You know, and, and the standard is always to get to the Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, it it, it makes it a, a lot more a lot more entertaining. You know what I'm saying? Justin, how about you? I mean, you look at the, the, the names on the facade, you see the, the championship numbers on the scoreboard, you walk into your locker room and you got the murals on both sides of the wall before you turn into the locker room. It's all around you. I mean, have you embraced it? Are you aware of it? Uh, yes, it's just, um, you know, coming when you sign here, or when you're drafted here or anything, there's a lot of tradition here. And there's, um, there's a way that people play uh, Green Bay Packer football. And you know that coming in, you know, you just try to live up to that, you know, uh, um, with, with your play style, with your, how you act in the community. It's not just a, only football, it's just how you deal with people and things like that. And um, I think we, everybody in the locker room tries to you know, live up to that standard. Yeah, it's, a, it's amazing uh, to play 100 years in the NFL. That's just an amazing run. <laughs> Nothing that the Bears have done yet, I don't think, Ricardo, right? <laughs> They've been around for 100 years. It's the Decatur Staley's the first. They still, live, they still live in the 85, man. Yeah, exactly. Whatever. Ditka, <laughs> who cares Hallis about those guys? founded the league, don't even Stop start. It. <laughs> Now, check this out. Uh, it seems to be kind of a trend uh, in the locker room, but uh, Justin, you were a district championship wrestler during your days at Southridge High School down in Miami. A little bit different climate down in Miami uh, this time of year than it is Green Bay, but we asked Kenny Clark this. He was on the show a couple weeks ago, but Kenny versus Mike Daniels in a wrestling match. Kenny said he wins that. Uh-oh. You versus Mike Daniels oh. in a wrestling match. Justin McRae, who wins that battle? I'm, I'm betting on myself on that one. No! Go. You got to get Mike to. Daniels on to defend to. himself. <laughs> Kenny said the same thing. Kenny was a state champion wrestler in, in, in California. Yeah. How about you and Kenny Clark? I'm going with me again. Yes. Oh, there yeah. we go. I like it. Yeah. A lot of wrestling technique. I mean, what's it like uh, when you're facing those two guys in the interior line in practice, knowing that uh, they've got the same leverage skills, the same technique skills? I mean, Ken- Kenny and Mike are two of the best D- interior D linemen in the league, uh, so definitely going against them every day is a challenge. 
But I think, you know, it gets us ready, you know, as far as the inside guys, gets us ready week in and week out to face whoever. Yeah, I think I'm, you got to get Mike Daniels on to defend himself a little bit. I'd love yeah, to hear Mike Daniels uh, reaction gotcha. to that one. Maybe give him a bag of candy corn because he loves candy corn. He'd too. give a lot longer answer than, than, than betting on myself. <laughs> just just yeah, don't put him in, in charge of the heater or the or, or the cooling system. The air system, conditioner. Yeah. He doesn't. He doesn't like. He doesn't <laughs> like turning cheap. that on when he's paying the bills. Now check this out. I don't know if uh, folks are aware of uh, the really interesting story that uh, the, the, the journey that Justin has taken to get from where he was to the NFL. But it wasn't all that long ago when uh, you were working with your twin brother Jordan as a bellman at the Westgate Lakes Resort and Spa in Orlando. Actually, it was the early the year of 2017, early 2017, and then unsure of your football future, and here you are today. You've made 11 starts along the offensive line, a key contributor, right, folks, to the offensive side of the football. I mean, you're talking relatively new stuff here. I mean, this is like, again, like January, February of 2017, then I think the Packers signed you in March of that year yep. as a free agent. So how did you do it? How did you keep the dream alive? Why didn't you just say, you know what? This just ain't gonna work, and I'm just gonna get back to uh, real life. Um, after after my twin brother and I, we both got cut um, in 2000, going into the 2015 season. I was with Tennessee and he was with Carolina. And, uh, you know, between him, my mom, my dad, and my older brother, uh, we always thought we could play. I mean, I thought I was a, a, a pretty good football player and I knew that uh, not working out and not, not chasing after it wasn't going to get me back in the league. So um, I didn't hear much after the, the 2015 season. Um, we got a call to go play arena football in Orlando, was where we went to college at. So, uh, I mean, it was just a chance to play football again, and we took, it, took the chance and ended up uh, having a good season. Um, didn't hear any calls that 2016 season either, so we stayed in Orlando where we knew we could, you know, get some good training and uh, had to get a job to, you know, afford the training and stay living up there, so we worked at a at a hotel as a as bellman, we worked the night shift, uh, two thirty to two thirty to one, and then we worked out in the mornings. So we just uh, you know kept going. You know, it's it's a lot easier to do things like that when you got somebody doing it with you. And my brother, you know, always pushed me, and I did the same thing for him. So it ended up working out. Oh, amazing, right? An amazing journey. Just step, kept sticking with it. You mentioned you spent the, the, the 2014 season with the Titans. How did that prepare you for uh, for your shot with the Packers? You, at least you had some experience being in the NFL. Yeah, it was a, I was on the practice squad the whole year, so I didn't actually play. But actually being in the building, you know, just seeing how meetings and stuff and uh, practices work and knowing that, uh, just knowing not how to be late to things. I mean, you learn that in college as well. But it's, I definitely think it was a good thing, you know, being there and going through OTAs and, you know, a rookie mini camp with another team. I think it definitely helped out when I got here. What's well, interesting too, and I'll kick it over to uh, Margaret here in a second. But your brother actually was spent part of the 2014 season with the Packers on the yeah. practice squad. So yeah. maybe you are Jordan here, and I don't really know what's going on. Ah, <laughs> no, maybe that is the case. <laughs> but what did he tell you about Green Bay and the Packers culture in the city and the region that maybe prepared you also for uh, what you're doing now? Um, he pretty much told me that there, you know, wasn't a lot to do. Um, <laughs> Wait, now listen here. <laughs> well, he's, he's telling the truth. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> now, at least lie a little bit, would you? Um, and pretty much told me to get ready for the code. And but uh, I, I, I took a visit here coming out of college. Um, I think it was in in April, and that was my first time ever seeing snow. I was uh, 21 years old, so I, I pretty much knew it was going to get cold. And that yeah. was, I think it was actually April 4th, 2014. I took a visit here. Yeah, it's, again, a little bit different than Miami. I'm sure you don't see snow in Florida and Miami too much. But uh, let's go over to Margaret. She's got uh, some questions online. Yeah, I've got two questions tonight. Um, the first is from Norman on Facebook. He wants to know, what is your guys' pregame routine, and is it always the same? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, for me, like, if we have, like, a noon game, um, wake up probably, like, Wake up call would be like 7 a.m. So I'll get up like uh, probably like 7:15. Uh, go home for a minute, um, take a shower, and then just get to the stadium. And then, you know, I got my music in, um, trying to figure out what I'm gonna wear underneath my pads. You know, how my socks are gonna be. Um, this is stuff like that. Um, now, if it's a night game like Monday night, now that's when. Wake up, wake up a little bit later, go home. I take a nap for about a few hours. Um, then wake up, get in the shower, and then get to the stadium and then eat a, eat a lot. Uh, yeah, eat a, I, I, like, I like to eat a lot before the game as far as like the pasta-wise because I feel like it gives me more energy. I've always been like that. Um, 
And then it's game time now. I got my music playing for about a couple hours and ready to go. Um, me personally, I'm super superstitious. So um, I wake up when we get the wake up calls, listen to the same songs on the way over to the stadium, um, eat same portion, same same uh, same meal every every week. Um, put my left left sock and left shoe on before the right right and left sock <laughs> right right side. Okay. Uh, uh, get taped by the same person. It's sort of like a little little routine, and if uh, if I mess it up, I I go back and and do it oh. over. Oh, yeah. So you might have to see smart, somebody man. about that. <laughs> a, little, a little OCD going yeah, on there. OCD. That's important, OCD. man. It's okay. You said it's the same song. What song do you listen to? Um, the first one is I, I don't know if I'm even saying this word right, but uh, I think it's Requiem of a Dream, Requiem, or I'm not sure how to say it, but um. Thank you. Whoever said that, but uh, yeah, I, I listen to that. It's about seven minutes long, but it's uh, it's on a lot of like highlight tapes and like um, like Gladiator movies. So it's sort of it's all instrumental, but I like it a lot. All right. You got another one, Margaret. And one more question. Yeah, this is from Joshua on Facebook, and he wants to know what do you guys do during the off season. He mentioned hunting and fishing, but what are your guys' hobbies? <laughs> you know what, man? I went fishing for the first first time in a long time uh, back in May, but in off season I'm down in Miami down in his, his neck of the woods. Um, I mean, I, I just, you know, I, I hang and I train. That's it, man. I hang out, hang out with, with, with my guys. You know, it's like, it's kind of like an NFL reunion down in Miami. Like, 80% of the league is down in Florida. If you're not That's in true. Florida, you're in California somewhere. So it's <laughs> like, you know, a lot of guys are down there. A lot of guys train at the same same spot. Um, I train at Bomberitos. Uh, so a lot of guys train there. Um, I guess, man, I just enjoy the weather. Um, Go to the beach, you know, train, train in the morning, and, you know, rest of the day to myself. Um, so that's, that's pretty much how the offseason goes. Take, a, take some trips, too, actually. Go out the country one time, uh, you know, stuff like that. I'm pretty much doing the same thing, just training and chilling with family. Uh, I, haven't taken any, I haven't taken any trips yet, but uh, I plan to this offseason. But uh, I guess my, I had never been to California before, so that was my one trip this past offseason. I went for a couple of days out there. Thank right. you. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, thanks to those uh, contributing to our chat. A few more questions before we get to uh, our first audience question. Got to kind of move this along. Uh, Lane Taylor, left guard, kind of the same journey in a sense, uh, undrafted, and now he is a, a starter on the offensive line. What have you taken from him that's helped you uh, get to where you are today? Um, I mean, last year when I came in between Lane and Jari, I was, I was soaking up a lot of knowledge from those guys, just the way they prepared, the way uh, – we sort of, me and Lane sort of have similar body types. We sort of play similar, so try to take a couple of things from his game definitely last year just because uh, I hadn't been around, a, around a, a group of guys that were in the league in a while. But, um, you know, Lane's a great player, great great guy to look up to, a great teammate. And, um, you know, I just try to emulate the stuff he does because he's a pretty good player. Yeah, you mentioned Jari too. That's right. Uh, I know you read some stuff about how you definitely picked his brain. One more question, and then I'm going to kick it over to Ricardo. But, okay. Maybe you can explain this to all the great Packer fans out there. Down 17 nothing at half against uh, the Bears in week one. 28-10 to at half, week three against the Skins. 24 zip at the half yesterday against the Lions. Why can't the offense get clicking a little bit? What's it going to take to get a fast start against the San Francisco 49ers reverse course? And uh, maybe you guys have a 24 nothing lead at halftime. I think it's just about, um, you know, like you said, starting fast and just eliminating, you know, little mistakes. It's little things here and there but that are easily correctable. But uh, just starting fast and knowing that uh, we have a very capable offense of putting up a lot of points, a lot of good ball players, a lot of talent. And um, I think moving forward, we're definitely going to do that. You got a message for the fans? You got a word like Aaron or Chill, like Ty and, and Josh? You got these nervous fans? You got something to tell them too? Um, tranquila. I mean, so ah, that's tranquil. Right. Spanish for I just went to UW Stevens yeah. Point. I don't okay. really know that kind of stuff. Re relax. I didn't learn that stuff in college. All right, uh, I'm going to kick it over to uh, Ricardo. You have a familiar face yes, for our audience question. Is, she's a friend of ours, Tracy Santos. Her question for Josh. Either one. So I know you guys can't get into specifics about what happens at halftime, but does what happens depend on the score, or do you guys always meet as a team, or do you split off into your positions? Um, you know, usually defense has their side of the locker room and offense has their side. You know, we go over – Halftime, um, you know, things that we're going to change or things we're going to do differently to attack the opposing offense and defense. 
And then uh, towards the end, um, coach coach calls us all up and tells us the things we need to do that uh, that have already been iterated by by the offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. So that's what we usually do. All right, uh, Great good stuff. question. Thank you, Tracy. Appreciate that. And uh, let's take another time out, Ricardo. Yes. It's time for trivia question number two. This time you are asking the question. Right, so I need you, Josh, and Justin to look out in the crowd and see who raises their hand first. Here's the question. Two teams, one from the AFC and the other from the NFC, remain undefeated this season. Who are they? Whoa, ooh, no, Don't no, shout it don't out. Don't make me throw the penalty flag on you now. <laughs> did Who's you see it? someone, Justin? Did Who's you see got someone? it, Justin? Did you see somebody? Yeah, one of the, the kids with the jersey. Yeah. Chiefs and the Rams, but an adult hey, needs to uh, get an it's adult real. needs to get the gift certificate. But yes, we'll pretend an adult said that. Yeah. <laughs> He's a couple years away. There, I'll give it to you, and you make sure you keep it. Okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> Kansas City Chiefs, L.A. Rams. Uh, the Chiefs and Rams, both five and zero. Oh, uh, Green Bay will take on the Rams in L.A. later this month in Week Eight. All right, we need Bob and we need Mary because it's time for tonight's Clubhouse Live Challenge, and we'll do it right after this thirty-second timeout. There's low, there's really low, and now there's lower than low. Seriously, Shopco's Lower Than Our Lowest Price Sale is back with crazy low prices through Tuesday. Envision Studio Bath Towels, four for $10. Men's or women's long sleeve tops, only $8.88. Snacks, water, and more, only $1.88. Wow, and get $10 in Shopco bucks when you spend $50 or more. Plus, get 3% back in Shopco rewards any way you pay. Hurry, crazy low prices end Tuesday at Shopco. Hey everybody, welcome back, and it's time for our Potawatomi Hotel and Casino Clubhouse Live Challenge. Get on island time to win a Caribbean cruise at Potawatomi. Thursdays in October and November. For more at paysbig.com slash island time. All right, Bob and Josh are together. Mary and Justin are together. And we're going to play a game that we like to call I Want My Mummy. Now, it's, it's getting close to Halloween time, right? So uh, it's time to spook things up a little bit on Clubhouse Live. The object is simple. Josh, if you could grab the streamers here. Justin, if you could grab the streamers there. Green and gold, you see what I did here. The object of the game is simple. You have 60 seconds to wrap your partner like a mummy. All right, you're gonna wrap your partner like a mummy. Now, 60, now you get 60 seconds. Ricardo, if you could keep track. I will do that. Now listen, how we're gonna determine the winner, how we're gonna determine the winner is by audience vote. The best looking mummy wins the game, okay? The best looking mummy wins the game. Now, the winner tonight gets, again, this cool Packers pennant. That's the last one I've got of these. Gets an autographed photo of Josh Jones. Packers shades, everybody. And uh, this MVP CD, which features our hit song MVP by Eric Lips here, our, our theme song. The oh, runner-up gets. Wait a minute. Uh, make sure it's the players that are getting wrapped. Yeah, no, listen, guys. No, no. The players are wrapping the contestants. Got you. Okay. You are not getting wrapped. Oh, okay, cool. You are wrapping up her. Josh, you're wrapping up him. Now, the runner-up gets the signed photo, the shades, the MVP CD. So it's 60 seconds. Who wants Josh to win, everybody? It always happens. Who wants Justin to win? Now, again, Josh, don't take offense to that because it <laughs> happens to every co-host. So with 60 seconds to wrap up your playing partner in a mummy, on your marks. Get set. Go. Here we go. Wrap them up. Ricardo, how much time do we got here? Okay, we're at the 50 seconds left. Oh, boy. Oh, there's going to be lots of dizziness. I hope there's not a reversal of fortune, if you know what I mean, that they didn't have too many cheese curds. What is, what is going on here? Where are we at, Ricardo, with time? 35 seconds. You're halfway through, halfway through. No, no, now you're halfway through, 30 seconds left. Here we go. Keep going, keep going. 25 seconds left. Come on, crowd, cheer them on, everybody. 20 seconds. How much, Ricardo? Count it down. 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's Stop. it. Stop. Time's up. Time's up. Hey, Justin, can you make sure Mary is not dizzy right now, please, and just hold on to her? I'm very concerned about her. 
I'm very concerned about her. All right, so here, take a nice, good, long look at your mummies, and they both look pathetic, by the way. They look pathetic. Everybody, who thinks Justin Mummies wins? Justin's mummy wins. And who thinks Josh's mummy wins? The crowd cheers for Bob and Josh. Bob, you're going home with the big prize package. Championship music, Rosie. Bob, you get the Packers pennant, my friend. You get the signed photo. You get the Packers shades, wear those proudly, and you get the MVP CD. Mary, don't go away. You got the signed photo, the shades, and the MVP CD. How about a round of applause, being good sports? That's one of my favorites, Ricardo. And, and somehow Mary has made it to her table without tripping over anybody. Justin, you're just making her spin and spin and spin. I thought we had a good thing going. You did have, uh, well, it wasn't the best effort I've seen in, in uh, The Mummy. We'll do it again next year around Halloween time, but I like it. And uh, as we get ready for our second audience question with Ricardo, and we start to wrap things up and wind down, Justin McRae, I know you have a man cave at home. I know you've got a shrine to yourself. I know you love looking at yourself, don't you? I do have a man cave, but it's majority just UCF guys that I played against in the league just hanging up in there. Well, I've got some more photos for your man cave. Josh knows what's coming up next. This oh, is going to look good in your, in your man cave. Look at this one. This is Josh Jones blocking for Aaron Rodgers. He can always tell his grandkids that someday. There it is on the monitor. You oh, and Lane Taylor that. combining. Appreciate that. I'll give it to you with number 12 in the background, making sure he stays clean. And then how about uh, blocking for, you guys ever hear Blake Bortles? This is uh, Justin McRae at Central Florida UCF, making sure that uh, Blake yeah, stays yeah. nice and clean as well. Look at him wearing that UCF Knights outfit. Appreciate that. The national champions from last year, apparently. Absolutely. I haven't lost a game in 600 Never plus lost days. A game. Man, you know what? Because I'm, I'm real friendly, you're going to get an MVP CD as well with our hit song from Appreciate Eric Lips here and Mike Thiel. Hey, Ricardo. Yes. You ready for our... You, you, got, you got a couple, a couple of Jets there, huh? I have a couple yeah. of the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. This is Alex, and he has a question. Go ahead, Alex. How do you motivate your teammates? Say that again. How do you motivate your teammates? Um, <laughs> me perso me yeah. personally, uh, you know, if I get to you know, see a guy one-on-one -on -one before the games, I just tell him all the good things he's going to do in the game. Um, you know, I told... Uh, um, Fackro, actually, before uh, before we played the Buffalo, I said, Fack, you gonna, I call him 10-sack Fack. I said, Fack, you're going to have a good game today. And he said, I appreciate it. And then he had, went out there and had a good game. So uh, I know it, it doesn't always work like that. But, uh, you know, I try and, try and tell everybody they're going to have a great game. Good question. I like yeah. it. Go up to Aaron Rodgers and do that sometime. So he had a good game. game. Just go tell him that. Say, Aaron, come on. <laughs> he does, he, he mean, he's going to have a great game regardless. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, this is Nate. Uh. Other than offensive line, what other position would you like to play? When they used to still make the NCAA games, when I was younger, I was always a running back. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was uh, – I didn't play football until I was in ninth grade. I thought I was going to be a skill position player until I actually ran a 40 and realized my life was in the trenches. So. <laughs> <laughs> How about right. you, Josh? If you, uh, Good job, guys. What, what, what position would you like to play besides safety? Uh, quarterback. Ooh, there we go. Uh, Tell, tell Mike McCarthy to put in a play for you. Nah, man. <laughs> my, my quarterback <laughs> days ended my, my sophomore year in high school. Oh, you know what you should do? On, be on field goal unit. A little flip to you, and all of a sudden you're just throwing downfield to yeah, somebody, really? huh? I, I might take it. off, though. I'm, I, I, don't know. <laughs> I, I was a running quarterback, though. One read, I'm gone. <laughs> Forget the <laughs> throw. He's taking <laughs> yeah. off it. He's taking on, off man. with his legs. All right, a uh, few more things before we uh, wrap it up. Shoulder, uh, Justin, the, the, the shoulder injury. We got to keep it down here a little bit, but the shoulder injury against Washington. How you feeling? Uh, what's you? How, how do you envision things going forward as you get back out there? Um, I'm feeling a little better. Um, not quite all the way back, but um, definitely, definitely better than I did after Washington. And um, as soon as I can get back, you know, I'm trying looking, looking forward to helping contribute to the team in whatever way that is. I was going to say now with you and Byron Bell, I suppose. What, what are some of the things you're talking with him like? using yesterday as an example. Mm -hmm. I suppose you guys are kind of both in that uh, iPad there, checking things out and yeah, we, uh, comparing notes. We, uh, I mean, the same thing he was doing when I was in there. You know, if I see something that, that could help him out, you know, I try and, you know, try and give it to him. But, you know, 
Byron's an eight-year vet. I mean, he knows. He's seen a lot of football, started a lot of games. And um, I just see whatever I can see, you know, that can help him out, whether, you know, he already knows it or not, and he always appreciates the help and, that, and vice versa when he gives it to me. I mentioned UCF. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but uh, the Central Florida Knights, they're ranked 10th. Yes. They're what? ranked 10th in the country. Look at it. Josh Jones doesn't even think. Like, what? Now, hold on now. Yeah. What? Undefeated. New coach, Damn. obviously, uh, Coach Frost now with Nebraska, and he's having a, a little rough time there with the, with the Cornhuskers, but he'll probably get it going in a little bit. But what's it going to take for your alma mater to get in the college football playoffs? I mean, I don't know. Ricardo, do you right. see that they put on their facade national champions 2017? And they have a legitimate claim, too. The players I got yeah. rings. Players got rings. It's they went legit. 13 and 0, won, won the Peach Bowl last year. So, what, how's it, how are they going to get in? Um, honestly, I think uh, we're obviously going to need to finish out undefeated. And then, um, you know, we don't get a lot of respect from the guys, you know, making the playoffs and things like that. So, honestly, I just feel like we need a lot of teams to lose, just being real. But uh, I definitely think they deserve a shot. You know, should, should we, uh, we finish up undefeated? That's two years being undefeated, two years, no losses. I mean, I, I think we at least deserve a chance, you know, to go in the playoffs and see what we could do. I'm not sure Josh is respecting UCF when he's, he's <laughs> kind of how they a top 10 team, oh, no though, right? Man. It's all right. We, we, top, uh, 20, top 25, man. But I don't know about top 10. I mean, we could. No, nah, I'm just kidding. It's been, it's <laughs> you know been what? I, I, when, I, when I played my red shirt freshman year in college, we beat them. In the in the St. <laughs> Petersburg St. Petersburg, I wasn't there. Bitcoin Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> you might have been there, 2014. Nah, I just the Bitcoin Bowl. <laughs> yeah, we beat them in the Bitcoin Bowl. Man. I remember that. And I caught an interception, turned it for like 40 yards, I think. You know, yeah. He still remembers. <laughs> he still remembers. <laughs> hey, Ricardo, a UCF legend, by the way, Gene Torchy Clark. Oh, Torchy really? Clark, you know yeah. who? Another one from Xavier, Brandon Marshall. Right yeah, well, nobody right. cares about All him. Right. <laughs> Torchy Clark, an Appleton legend, went right. to uh, UCF and built that uh, men's basketball program into a powerhouse back in the 80s, I think. Uh, last thing, guys, Monday Night Football is coming up. You're taking on the 49ers, but just besides playing them, how cool is it to play on Monday Night Football for you guys? I'm sure as football fans, you always watch that game, and now you gotta, uh, you're going to play under the lights. It's Monday night, the only game in town that night. How cool is that? Um, any chance you get a chance to play primetime, it's a cool thing, just knowing that... Uh, I mean, you're the only game on. Everybody's gonna be looking. I mean, I mean, I'll probably we'll probably go home and watch the game tonight. Um, so just knowing that uh, you're playing in front of the nation is a good thing. Josh, what do you think about playing on a Monday night? Um, you know what? It's fun because I mean, you're the only only game on. Uh, everybody's home from work. Uh, I mean, I would hope so. Uh, watching the game, um, and it's all eyes on you. You know what I'm saying? It's just just Monday night football. I, I'm a big fan of Monday night football. I'm a huge fan of Monday night football. That's right. Uh, go out there and get a W, right, guys? And uh, go into that bye week with some good momentum. All right, hey, how about uh, Justin McCray and Josh Jones tonight? Good show. A few things before we wrap up. I'm going to do trivia question number three, and I'm going to read it really fast. It's in, again, like, up next for the Packers is a Monday Night Football matchup against the 49ers at Lambeau. Now, the two teams hooked up for a memorable Monday Night October matchup at Lambeau in 1996, a 23-20 overtime victory for the Packers. That was highlighted by an 11 reception, 220 yard night by this veteran wide receiver. Who remembers? You know it? Get up here, Don Beebe. There's a blast from the past. It's Bob's night. It's Bob's night. He gets the pizza and beer. Beebe scored on a 59 yard hookup with Brett Favre, and then Chris Jackie drilled a 53 yard field goal in overtime to clinch the win. Jackie, five field goals on the night. Beebe's 220 yards, Ricardo, that ranks as the third most in a single game in Packers history. Still back, the great veteran Don Beebe. All right, Ricardo, it's time to go up north. Uh, who are you picking, Packers or 49ers? What graphic are we going to see up off, there on I the monitor been, there? I have been right the last two weeks, but no Garoppolo. They're not even going to have a chance against the Packers, so I'm picking Green Bay. There it is. It's know. on the board. It says Ricardo Packers. Well, you know who I'm picking. I'm going 28-17 Green Bay Packers, right? You love me. Yeah. You love me. You're right, Garoppolo out for the season. C.J. Beathard, though, is a pretty good quarterback, but no, he's not Jimmy Garoppolo. But uh, San Fran, no, not much of a pass rush, and I think that uh, I think I think the turnovers are going to come, and I think that uh, you're going to win 28-17 at Lambeau. I think also the offense gets off to a fast start. There's been so much attention on it. I think the, the mistakes are going to get corrected, and uh, I think it's going to be actually uh, not even as close as 28-17. Looks, and you're going in that bye week, 3-2-1, Run and get, the ball. And get Run ready. Run the ball. the ball. Give it to uh, your three-pronged rushing attack led by Aaron Jones. All right. Ricardo, Packers News app. That's right. With exclusive commentary, insider analysis, and award-winning photos and videos 
From USA Today Network, Wisconsin's Packers coverage team, Packers News app is your one-stop shop. For complete coverage of the Green Bay Packers, this app is available for iPhone and Android users only. Motorola Razor, got to upgrade. Hey, special thank you to our sponsors and friends. Shopco, the official hometown store of the Green Bay Packers. Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Again, Thursdays at Potawatomi. Win a Caribbean cruise during the Island Time giveaway this October and November. More at PaysBig.com. Don't forget about our friends at Concrete Cutters, serving our communities for over 38 years. Escort Limousine Service, the preferred limousine service of the Green Bay Packers. Silly Toast Designs, our apparel sponsor, original designs, custom screen printing, and of course, the fine folks here at the Paper Valley Hotel. Again, programming reminder, no show next week. So Mean Gene, if you're here, you're by yourself. You'll be at the game on Monday night. Don't be here next Monday. In two weeks, coming off the bye, we will have a show. Josh Jones assures me he will be here, right, Josh Jones? I'm going to be here. And he'll be bringing a guest, too, so pay attention for that. You get the final word tonight. Uh, I mean, I want to say something to the, uh, the young guys in the back, um, Pop Warner team. Um, I mean, I, like I said, I, I, can remember, I can remember when I was in you guys' uh, shoes. Um, um, I remember my first year, man, of, of, of Pop Warner football. Um, and, it, and it goes by fast. So what I would say with you guys, man, enjoy being that young. Enjoy childhood. Um, just enjoy, enjoy, enjoy that what you guys are doing with with each other. Um, appreciate appreciate each other. Um, um, you know, appreciate this game that you guys are playing. You know, because it's a privilege more than anything. Um, you guys as parents didn't have to let you guys play football. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying. So um, just go out there with a you know positive attitude all the time. Um, play hard. You know, have fun because this 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 game is supposed to be fun. You know, football is fun. Um, Score touchdowns, make plays, um, and just enjoy life, you guys. So uh, appreciate you guys for coming, uh, as always. God bless. And always listen to your parents. Always listen to your parents. Hey, keep those claps coming for Justin, for Josh, for Ricardo, Margaret, and the rest of the Clubhouse Live crew. I'm Brett Christopherson saying so long. We will see you in two weeks as we get ready for the stretch run with this guy, Green Bay Packers safety, Josh Jones, Mean Gene, and the Jets, take it away. Concrete Cutters is the area's leader in egress window installation. Egress windows are a critical safety requirement in any finished lower level, and no one offers Concrete Cutters' combination of experience and technology. Concrete Cutters is a distributor of Rockwell egress window wells, bringing natural light into your basement and creating a safe, easy exit in an emergency. Rockwell products are built to last and come with a 10-year limited warranty. Learn more about egress window installation at ConcreteCutters.net. Give us a call or stop in and see us at 1020 Prospect Lane in Kokona.